Hey everyone, I'm Maddie from ATAR Wizard and today I am going to be going over Unit 3, Area of Study 1, dot point number 2 of the VCE Psychology Curriculum. Now, this dot point reads, the role of neurotransmitters in the transmission of neural information across a neural synapse to produce excitatory effects or inhibitory effects as compared to neuromodulators that have a range of effects on brain activity. So the notes I will be using are the Complete Psychology Unit 3 and 4 Notes Package, which you can purchase via the link in the description. You can also book one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me via the link in the description. So I look forward to seeing you there, but without further ado, let's get going. So first we're gonna look at neurotransmitters. So let's get a fun pen color. Can we do like a blue? Because that feels like a neurotransmitter color. I've got neurotransmitters. Chemical substances which carry messages around the body by being released from the presynaptic neurons and then binding to postsynaptic neurons. The diagram below depicts this process. So I'm just gonna drink a smidge of water. So, the presynaptic neuron is this, consists of the synaptic vesicle, which is this thing, and the axon terminal, which is... So then these are the little receptors. That thing there is the neurotransmitter. Uh, this is the postsynaptic neuron, and this, in the middle of the two um, neurons, is the synaptic gap. So you can see the neurotransmitters being released from the presynaptic neuron, travelling along the synaptic gap, and then... But I'm um, coming to the postsynaptic neuron. So, two main neurotransmitters are first glutamate, which is excitatory, and GABA. So, um, this is so GABA is inhibitory. So, glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter, meaning that it makes postsynaptic neurons more likely to fire. So when glutamate, um, when so when glutamate comes in contact with the postsynaptic neuron, it's going to make that postsynaptic neuron more likely to fire. When GABA comes in contact with the postsynaptic neuron, it's going to make the postsynaptic neuron less likely to fire. So when there's more glutamate it speeds neural transmission. So the speed of activation of neural pathways is gonna be stronger. Whereas with GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, the speed of neural transmission is gonna be slower because GABA makes postsynaptic neurons less likely to fire. So GABA and glutamate counterbalance each other. So just because the postsynaptic neuron, 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 neurotransmitter receptor has been like worked on by glutamate doesn't mean that a different one won't be being worked on by GABA and so they're essentially balancing each other out um so just because this is a post wait if this is the postsynaptic neuron then just because there's like a little bit of GABA here doesn't mean that they're cut and these are these are um neurotransmitter receptors my fingers so just because there's GABA here doesn't mean there can't be glutamate here so when there's more glue if there's one bit of glutamate here and the rest is all GABA then the speed of neural transmission is still going to be slowed down because all of this is GABA so the GABA is outweighing the glutamate which is just on this um neurotransmitter receptor if that makes sense so Whereas the opposite can happen, there can be like, all this can be glutamate and just this can be GABA. And so then the speed of neurotransmission is going to be increased. Um, so they kind of balance each other to manage the speed of neural activity. A neurotransmitter is only able to pass a message on to the postsynaptic neuron if the neurotransmitter is able to receive that specific kind of neurotransmitter. So some neurotransmitter receptors can't um, receive some neurotransmitters. So if you have glutamate, right, it's going to need a special neurotransmitter receptor to accept that glutamate. So the neurotransmitter acts as a key and the postsynaptic neurons receptor site acts like a lock. So the key and the lock must be complementary for the message to be conveyed. So 
if the neurotransmitter is the wrong kind of key, it's not gonna it's not gonna unlock the neurotransmitter receptor. So now if we move on to neuromodulators, which I'm making purple because it feels like they're pro like purple. So unlike neurotransmitters, neuromodulators impact whole regions of the brain. So whereas a neurotransmitter will work on one like neural connection, so one postsynaptic neuron, the neuromodulators can impact like multiple neurons at the same time. And rather than acting quickly, their impacts can last for long periods of time. So neuromodulators also have different impacts depending on the region of the brain. So the main differences, and this is important because in the dot point, it states that we have to be able to compare the neurotransmitters to neuromodulators. So key differences are that neuromodulators impact whole regions of the brain and neurotransmitters don't. And neuromodulators impacts last for a long period of time and neuromodulators have different impacts depending on the region of the brain that they're in. So, two main neuromodulators are serotonin and dopamine. So, serotonin can act as a mood stabilizer, with low levels of serotonin being associated with mental health dis disorders such as depression and anxiety. And it can also impact emotional processing, sleep, appetite, and pain perception. Whereas dopamine, is the body's natural reward system. So when someone does something, dopamine is released, something like rewarding, dop dopamine is released, creating a feeling of pleasure and motivation, making them more likely to wanna to do that thing again. This has a key role in learning, motivation and appetite, but can also contribute to addiction, which can be undesirable. So if you think of someone with a gambling addiction, every time they win something, gambling, dopamine is released. So this increases, this is this feeling of reward and increases their likelihood of them wanting to do it again, which can lead to a gambling addiction. So is this this stop point? Yep. So Parkinson's disease is believed to be caused by a reduction of dopamine production in the midbrain, which is a, just a part of the brain in the, in the middle. It's in between the forebrain and the hindbrain, but that's not particularly important for VCE. This causes a reduction in the ability to control muscle movements, contributing to the key traits of Parkinson's disease, which are listed here. So that is it for this dot point. Again, you can purchase these Complete Psychology Unit 3 and 4 notes from the link in the description. You can also book one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me via the link in the description. Um, next episode, we're going to be looking at the third dot point, which is looking at synaptic plasticity. So if you're interested in that, make sure to keep watching on to the next episode. Now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next episode. Bye.